just going to let it run for a few minutes, let it get hot, well warm, up to temperature, I want the oil to become warmer so it'll be more slick to pour out, that's what I always do. Sidling okay anyway, it's a little bit of a, b -b 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 little bit of an inconsistency there but I think we'll deal with that later. Uh, just want to see what it runs like anyway, so fired up nice. Okay, so tools underneath this one is, yes, obviously speaks for itself, a drain bowl under there. 22mm socket for the drain plug and a 17mm, I've just got a 17mm for the oil filter. So it's a K&N filter, they, they have a 17mm bolt end on so you can rattle them off. Um, apart from that, an oil filter spanner. So let's get this oil drilled, drained out. So watch your fingers on here, this will be red hot and you don't want to be spilling oil all over it either. Now the oil is going to be hot, so I would recommend you be very careful. Let that go, just like that. That oil is dirty and black so it's not clean at all. One thing I'm looking for in here is iron filings on the drain plug. That's pretty clean. That's not one piece of metal on there. Nothing. So that's really good, actually. Right, I'm going to leave the oil dripping now. So I'm going to get the tank up and have a look at the air filter. And we'll get these plugged in. Look at that bottom fucking box. Right, I'm going to let that oil drip out of there now. I'm going to leave it dripping. So I'm going to get this tank up and get the air box off and do all the other bits and bats for it while that's dripping out. And I'll put the oil in last. These should be 10 mil bolts now. I do hope no one comes near while I'm doing this. <laughs> it looks a bit odd, doesn't it? I've given up, I've had enough. I have often said to myself that the S-Rad is probably the most easiest bike to service out of anything I've ever worked on. You can do this in literally under an hour. It's that brilliant. Providing everything's uh, loose and nothing's seized. But yeah, getting the airbox off, everything flows back together. I love it. So that's nice and loose. Usually on the on the bloody um, inline four bikes, other jack bikes, you have to you have to uh, unscrew each individual throttle body to get the damn airbox off but obviously the Suzuki's are well thought out they put a, a, a long threaded bar all the way through it so you can untighten every single one of them the green one here get rid of that that was easy you got a vacuum tube here you want to remove okay vacuum tube that goes into the bottom of it and the plug which is there Let's have a look at the air box then. So we've got, this is the bolts I was talking about, it runs straight through. So I can undo one there, one there, and pull this straight off so you're not having to do individual cylinders. Good idea that. Next thing I'm gonna do is unplug all these pencil cords. One, two, three, four. Don't worry about getting them in the uh, wrong order when you put it back together because they all have their own cable length to them. As you can see there, they all have a, their own cable length to them, so you can't get this wrong. All right, let those dangle down there. That's a stiff one, that is. I'll get the other out first. Why are the end ones so solid? Got you. Oh, there we go. 
All right, when you get these coils out, you can pull these caps off, off them, all right? Get it off there. We've got the caps off now. We can see inside that copper contact point there just to see if it's all corroded or if it's going green and manky. We're going to clean those up. We're going to also clean these pins up in there because these pins just do look a little bit on the green side. Right, I think we all know exactly what I'm going to be using to clean this out with. Get that in there. Hard pick. I'll let that soak in our pick a little bit. These are sealed so the hair pick will not work its way through inside the coil and start de degrading any of the metal components or anything like that. Drop that in there. It's taking a lot. Again, I can see shiny metal falling in there. It's hard to focus in here. I know you can't see what I'm doing very well, but it is cleaning these up. It does do its job. You can see in there it looks a lot shinier. Sorry about the non-focusing camera I'm using. Ah, right, there we go, it's better, isn't it? Can you just see inside there now? It looks a little bit clean. I know I didn't show it to you before, but that looks a lot shinier than it did do. That's all the crap off the swab there. I'll give that another little going over. Get a bit more in there. Let it do its thing. I can see all that crap coming to the surface, you see that? All the oxidization coming to the surface. Tip it out and give it a scrub. It's clean there already. Right now I'm happy with that, so what I'm going to do next Mind that out of the way So now I'm going to neutralise it just by spraying, because you use WD-40 any oil in there. Let that neutralize the arpic and also protect the copper contacts inside there.
There's a lot of crap coming out of that one. Right, next job I'm going to start cleaning these as well now. I'm literally going to pour that in there. Oh no. A mess. So I'll just give it a few minutes just to work its magic. Maybe wash around in there. So I don't know if you can see that, but let's see if we can get the light on, there we go. It instantly looks better than it did, put it that way. Right, look inside there now, that is spotless light, brand new isn't it? Pretty dirty before. Right, what we're going to do now is uh, clear up and test these. Okay, so these are now all clean. So what we're going to do is a resistance test on the coils, primary and secondary circuit. Okay, one's a low voltage and the other is a high voltage circuit. So we're going to need a multimeter for this. Set it to ohms. <coughs> Sorry, ohms. Ohms. Bloody ohms. Right. Now, sorry, I'll put that where you can see it. Okay, so we, we've got a, a, an open circuit there. And if this reads zero, there's no resistance. Which is good. Good. They're all clean anyway now. Okay, so if you've got a reading on there, let's say, uh, I probably can't simulate it on here, but if you've got a reading on there, um, where it was, 0.5 or something like that, it means there's some resistance in there, so they're going bad, basically, the primary circuit. You might get a bad, you might get a misfire out of that. Right, next we're going to do the secondary coil. And we're going to test, we're just going to test this on both pins, make sure they get the same reading. So we've got our probe at the bottom here where the spark plug goes and the other one try it on both pins 5.42 i did test this before i cleaned it i did test these and the highest most of them were 5.89 so we've actually reduced the resistance 5.43 beautiful we've actually reduced resistance from cleaning those up Four, six, that's beautiful, that. So if that was higher than five ohms, then they want to be replaced. It'll probably splutter and not run correctly on hard throttle. 5.45, really good, that. It's like a brand new one again. They're all within the same spec. 5.49. Brilliant, yeah. If uh, any of those readings, if that was on six, then replace a the coil. If that was on higher than that, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, higher, the worse it's going to be. So on the secondary coil there, if that was higher, what I've tested here, you would probably get a misfire on that cylinder. It would probably sputter and bang and shit like that when you were riding it. It wouldn't run correctly. You'd definitely know about it. So they're good now. We've, we've serviced those. Absolutely pleased with that result. 
get these back on. Lost one. There it is. All right. All right, 16 mil socket for these. I'll loosen them all up first and we'll pull them all out. There's always one awkward one, isn't there? That is way rich. That washer shouldn't be coming off either. Fucking hell. Right, so we've got a bit of an issue here. Uh, these plugs look very, very old, by the way. So we've got, uh, I'll try and focus for you there. So we've got cylinder one, the washer's coming away, which ain't good. And it's running incredibly rich, but also the other cylinders are running rich. This is not good at all. So, we, I mean, I don't know if this bike's being tuned at all, but if that's been tuned, then it's been tuned very badly. Because all cylinders are way too rich. That is so black and sooty. This could also be down to the fact that apart from the tuning in this could also be the ignition coils the circuit could have been bad it could also be the plugs are bad so it's not burning off all that fuel um but that is not very good at all so i'm gonna go with old plugs for now i'm getting it all over my hands look but they are black and sooty that is like an old two-stroke plug this washer is coming apart so that will signify to me that these have had their day. Yeah, right. Right, I'm just checking that the coil plugs as well are all clean. I'm going to have square with some oil, so some electrical contact cleaner, so they look okay. Then make sure all they're clean as well. If the coils are corroded, then it's possible they will be. Make sure they do click in as well. Right, that's that done. So if you've done this before with the air filter, it's a quite it's quite a noddy task, so there's nothing special about it really. It's just pull it out and put a new one in, but I've got to make sure the air box is clean. So I've got a race filter in here. It's not in bad condition to be honest. So inside, in there, is where you'll get all your bugs and your road crap. Right, let's get this air filter back in then. So we're all spotless now inside that. I've blown all those bugs out. You can see daylight through it. Again, you don't have to take this air box off to clean the air filter. If you're not doing the plugs, you can just uh, 
remove this cover and take the air filter out so I've got a screw missing I need to find him okay before I fit the tank you must go around all these vacuum hoses here and make sure that there are no tears in them give them a give them a, a squeeze make sure they're not dry if you get any tears around here just simply chop it back and re re uh, connect it that's all I need to do but any holes or tears in these will cause you problems okay make sure the tips are on there on the vacuum air leader as well make sure they've got tips on there covered up all right I just want to make sure everything's lubed. Don't want any dry joints. Get all our vacuum hoses as well, don't forget any of these. So we're all on, simply tiny up and that's it, for well, that stage. Right, sump plug, get the sump plug in there. Before I forget, there's many times where I've uh, <laughs> removed the sump plug, dumped the oil out, done other things and then come back, poured oil in it, it's gone. Pissed out all over the floor. Not on my watch, not today. Oh, I forgot that's um, torque setting. I put that to 18 foot pounds, okay? 18 to 20 foot pounds, that's why I set mine as. What I've done is I've just covered that up so all the oil doesn't spill out all over the header pipes. It goes straight into the bowl. We don't have to get we don't get smoking when we fire it up again. If you've got a cane in filter, it's a 17 mil on there. There we go. Right, so we've got 2.6 litres to put in here. That's what it states on there, look, 2.6 litres, so, uh, or 2,600 mil. So what we're gonna do is we've got 600 mil cups here. So I'm gonna do um, four 600 mil fill-ups, obviously, and then we're gonna do a 200, that should give us our, our correct measurement. Okay, so we've got our Silkaline fully recyclable oil box. Usually, you don't have to take this oil box out, but when they posted it, the underneath was open, so it's kind of fell out, but I'm going to leave it like that anyway. Uh, it's nice and easy to get poured out. So these have a cutaway, you can see it there at the top. What you do, this little spout here, you can see how it's got a little rim around it to lock in that. This rim here should sit tucked under this cardboard, then you push this down. That should trap it, then you've got two little grab handles. Should be one on the other side as well. There we go. That way you've got fully pourable oil bottle like that, okay? So you can use these again and they're fully recyclable, but because they posted it, the underneath bottom of the oil bottles uh, open like that. And we're gonna just use it on this bench like this. Okay, let's get this done then. I'm going to fill it right to the top and that air will rise out of it, the oil will soak its way in. Just priming this filter. Great, I always manage to get that on without spilling any. So I'm just going to do it hand tight, tight as possibly can. And get rid of our tape now, don't need this on.
Right, so now that's done, I've got my oil in there. I've left it about uh, 100 mil short, so I'm just gonna check the oil once it's been running. And if I need to top it up, I'll just top it up. Okay, I'd rather top it up than dump any out. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is get some fuel in it. And also put in some injector cleaner. Because yes, this is fuel injector cleaner. And it has the injectors. Don't use this on carburetor engines. I know some people, I've tried this uh, working waste out of it. I know some people try this with car bread and it won't do nothing to be honest. Not put a full bottle in there, probably had about this much in, something like that. Just using it up. I, I use this this stuff, petrol. Um, petrol and diesel injector cleaner quite regularly on, on the cars, you know, every time I fly about twice a month, something like that, you know, keep them sweet, you can tell the difference, I don't think that's the right funnel for this, but we'll get it in anyway, right, let's go. That seems to run sweet to me. I don't need to do any, any tuning or altering anything else on that now. Uh, it did start off a little bit groggy, but I think that after that uh, fuel injector cleaner and some fresh fuels got through that system, it just seemed to open out and, and run pretty sweet. So I've adjusted the idle um, on it, just dropped it down a little tad, and it just seems to be nice and balanced out really. So I'm not gonna do any more of this now. Check the coolant in it there. It looks quite fresh, the coolant, so I'm not gonna change that. That's all for this bike now, so I'm going to get the fairings back on it, um, give it a good old wash and polish. Alright, so we're going to get these fairings on, and that's it for this bike. We'll see you next time. Next project, possibly a GPZ. So, stay tuned.